Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to talk about a quick review of estimation, which is clearly under the branch of inferential statistics. And uh, this is a slightly different idea than hypothesis testing because in hypothesis testing, we are interested to decide whether the null hypothesis of a specified value should be rejected or not. Uh, in, in, in estimation, uh, we are simply interested to estimate the population par parameters based on the sample data that you get. To put it simply, again, remember, um, we are always interested in studying the population. So here we have our big population with all the elements in it. And most of often, we uh, have to resort to taking a sample and studying the sample because of various reasons. And so let's say we take a sample out of it. So here is your sample. Instead of studying this big population, we are just going to focus our attention on this um, sample group. So here is our sample. Normally what we do is we will get some measurements, we will calculate some values, for example, mean or standard deviation and so on. And those are called statistics because the calculation uh, is done from the uh, data based on the elements in the sample whereas if you are able to uh, calculate the mean or standard deviation by taking all the elements in the population then those things are called parameters and I've explained in the previous video that parameters are usually unknown and that is the reason why you want to estimate them because they are unknown so what happened is um, you will then use statistic to estimate the parameters. So that's the idea. So statistics will be used to, to estimate the unknown parameters. Basically, there are two types of estimation. The point is estimation is very straightforward. It is just uh, providing one particular value to the unknown parameter. Okay, So you just say... What's the value of theta? So you give one specific value. On the other hand, when you talk about the interval estimation, which is definitely more desirable than the point estimation, you are looking at expressing the unknown parameter, parameter theta in terms of um, lower limit and upper limit. So you will, ex you will express the parameter to be between two values here, lower and upper values. And this is also known as the confidence interval. And in order to construct the confidence interval, you need to decide on the confidence coefficient to be used. And the common values of confidence coefficient are 0 0.9, 0 0.95, and 0 0.99. So, so basically, let's say if you are interested in, uh, in estimating the pop the population mean. Okay, so let's just give a a simple example. Let's say you are interested in estimating the population mean. So from here, you want to know what is the population mean, which is what is mu. Now, based on statistic here, uh, naturally you will go and calculate the value of sample mean. So sample mean is x bar. So if you are interested in point estimation, then, then you are just going to say the value of mu is equal to x bar. That's it. One specific value, right? But if you're interested in interval estimation, that means you are going to say that mu will be in between two values, which is obviously, uh, we will take the result here from statistic, remember from the sample, to estimate the unknown parameter. So we'll be using the estimate. And here you will expect to add some component here so that you can express it in terms of interval, right? 
and over here will be minus some value okay so the the part here this part here x bar plus minus something so that something here will require this confidence coefficient uh, to be plugged in so that you get 95% uh, confidence interval or 90% confidence interval and so on now interval estimation and hypothesis testing they are somewhat related um, and it is given as such for example when you have values that are compatible with the null hypothesis that means uh, you will see the same values here that, that are going to be contained in the interval estimation okay values of the parameter theta in the 100 1 minus alpha percent is equal to the values that are compatible with the null hypothesis uh, let me just give you a simple example let's say that our null hypothesis is uh, theta is equal to c so what it means that when you construct an interval estimate so imagine that this is a real number line and let's say that um, the interval estimate says uh, theta is between two values here l and u so you can imagine having this is the position of l and this is the position of u that means um, theta can take whatever value from um, this part here it can be anything so we have infinite number of possible values in this particular interval so these are the values of theta according to the interval estimation and you will expect that c has to be in it okay values that uh, are compatible with the null hypothesis which is this one the null hypothesis says the value here is c then c must be in the um, interval estimation constructed so again values of, that are compatible with the null hypothesis is equal to the values of the uh, parameter theta in the interval estimation and because of this uh, situation here we can use the result to to decide whether we can reject or do not reject the null hypothesis in other words uh, what i'm trying to say is instead of um, making the decision to reject or do not reject based on p-value or traditional approach then you can actually consider the confidence interval approach as well so in in this particular approach uh, you can see that the general steps for hypothesis testing are more or less similar because we start off with formulating the null and alternative hypothesis and choose a significance level alpha and note that um, this alpha here will be directly translated at this part in, in the process of constructing the confidence interval itself. So you're going to calculate the uh, confidence interval, specified 95% um, or 90% and so on. And again, it makes sense that you will reject h if the confidence interval does not contain the hypothesized value in in H null. For example, if this value here, when you check on the interval estimation, it, 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 it is not there. When this value is not in the interval estimation, that means you can reject H null. Okay, and then you can just make some sort of conclusion. Okay, uh, here's a quick example to illustrate the comparison of traditional approach and confidence interval approach in hypothesis testing. Uh, I have talked about this um, a lot before this and so uh, if you want to go through the videos, you, sh you, you can. But if you just want a quick example, you can go straight to this playlist, Introduction to Hypothesis Testing and Common Statistical Test and go for video number 38 and here you can see that the first step here is again as i have shown here we start off with formulating h and h1 
and here is the confidence interval uh, where clearly this is the parameter and the unknown parameter here is expressed between two values this is the lower value and this is the upper value and of course um, go and check the position of null hypothesis so null hypothesis says sigma squared or population variance is equal to 150 so you have to check is 150 um, is in the interval so clearly 150 is in the interval because the interval here is from 98.3 to 362 so 150 is in it that means you you cannot reject the null hypothesis okay so based on your sample data you are unable to reject the null hypothesis okay unable to reject it because uh, they are uh, the, the, the the result that we have here is actually supporting the null hypothesis right and then after that you just make some sort of conclusion okay um well i think that's all for now thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video